You would never guess it snowed here yesterday. Oh, it is a beautiful day outside. I just had to get outside for a minute just to walk around and see, see the sights, see what's going on. I just got through eating lunch and I was thinking to myself, man, that was a great lunch. But I was also sitting there thinking how great my lunch was. I was also thinking there's a lot of people that don't get to eat lunch. In fact, there's a lot of people that don't get to eat supper or breakfast either. They don't get to eat much at all. Because there's a lot of people nowadays that are really hurting that, that, that don't have the same things that maybe you and I have. This has sort of been a tender spot on my heart here lately with benevolence and how to deal with benevolent issues because as a pastor of a church we deal with benevolent issues all the time and truth be told there's a lot of folks we have to turn away because we just can't fund every benevolent need that comes across our way we have to be very judicious about how we handle benevolent needs and and sometimes that's one of the hardest parts of ministry I mean, on the one hand, you want to be extremely generous and benevolent to everybody that you can. On the other hand, there are a lot of folks that will take advantage of your benevolence and you try to counter the two somehow and try to be as generous as you can while at the same time not being taken by those who would take advantage of you. And I'm just here to tell you, that's not an easy place to be and it's not an easy thing to do. Inevitably, you're going to get fooled by some people who come to you with what appears to be a genuine need, but they're really just doing it to try to pull as much money from you as they can. Not only that, there has to be some limitations as to, to what you can and cannot do when it comes to benevolence. The reason I say you have to have some limitations is because I recently had a conversation with a lady that has been really spending herself on benevolent needs. She goes way above and beyond her call of duty in being benevolent toward other people, showing kindness, uh, giving of herself and her time and her money uh, to help people out that are genuinely in need. Because of this, she was sort of getting worn out because to be that benevolent, it takes a lot of energy and, and resources to do those kind of things. She sent me an email uh, asking you know, what she needed to do because she was at a point she wasn't sure how much more she was going to be able to do. And after a lot of prayer trying to understand how to respond to her uh, email, I sent her this verse. But as for you, brethren, do not grow weary of doing good. Now, on the one hand, what that verse is saying is that we should always be doing good things. We should constantly be doing as much good as we possibly can, whether it be through benevolent giving, whether it be through the time that we exert into people's lives to try to, uh, to encourage them and lift them up, and that we should, should be doing those things constantly. But I pointed out to her, it also says, do not grow weary in doing good, which means don't spend yourself so much that you don't have anything else left to give. I mean, let's face it, there comes a point where you can only do so much to where it becomes so taxing that you can't do anything else. And if you can't do anything, then you're no good to anybody. I mean, so to speak, I'm not saying you're worthless. You, you get what I mean there. And so I got to this point where I was thinking, had I done as much as I could possibly do to help the needs of people who needed things and who needed uh, assistance in any sort of way. On the other hand, I got to thinking, had I ever gotten to a point where I was so weary of doing good that I was worn out like she was? And so it was this really strange balance, this place where uh, you need to be giving as much as you can, but you also need to be taking care of yourself as well. And, and, and I've just been thinking about this constantly and, and I know that there are so many hurting people around us and, and around our church and that we need to meet the needs of. But at the same time, I know that we can't meet every need that comes available. But I want our church to be a church that, that helps meet as many of those needs as we possibly can. I want to be the kind of person that helps meet the needs of people, that helps uh, people get back on their feet. More than anything, I want people to know the same grace that I was shown, I was given, whenever I didn't have anything to return. And that was the grace that Christ showed me when he saved me from my sin. 
Spiritually, I had nothing. There was nothing that I could bring to him to, to earn his favor. There was nothing that I had that I could bring to him to uh, impress him in any sort of way. But yet, he had everything, and, and not only did he just uh, give grace to me to do that, he literally expended every ounce of what he had on a cross to die for my sin. And I, and I didn't deserve that. You know, in the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus says this, but love your enemies and do good and lend expecting nothing in return and your reward will be great and you'll be sons of the most high for he himself is kind to ungrateful and evil men. We're going to, to encounter people who are really in genuine deep need and we need to do our best to help meet those needs because Christ met our need, the need that we had for redemption. I'm very grateful for that. It's Valentine's Day, so go share love with someone today. Supply a need for somebody that has a need and help someone who's hurting and show them what true love really is.